Hi there, meteorologist Rob Carl Mark. Uh, here to talk with one of the true experts uh, in the in the uh, forecasting world for hurricanes. His name is Dr. Philip Klotzbach, and he's somebody that I look to all the time to really bone up on what I need to know about any ongoing hurricanes and forecasting in the future. And, and you may be wondering, uh, Dr. Klotzbach, why in California we care about this. I'll tell you one thing, wind-wise, over these mountains behind me, we're gonna have a hurricane force wind gust later on tonight, so the wind speeds can get there occasionally, but maybe only in the mountains. But you know, the East Pacific Basin just seems like it's on par with what you're seeing in other parts of the world. So do you have any, any uh, clue about what's been going on, say, over the last decade in the East Pacific regarding hurricanes? Yeah, so um, obviously, as you mentioned, you know, the East Pacific storms can cause significant impacts in California, as you saw obviously last year with uh, Tropical Storm Fausto, which was a pretty menial storm, but obviously had a tremendous amount of lightning and it caused a lot of wildfires um, in California. Um, so with the Eastern Pacific, has actually been fairly quiet the last few years. Usually the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic tend to go opposite of each other. So last year, as some of you may know, it was extremely active Atlantic hurricane season. We broke the record for most named storms, whereas the Eastern Pacific was actually pretty quiet. We only had four hurricanes in the basin. The average is about eight. Um, so it was actually a pretty quiet Eastern Pacific season while the Atlantic season was extremely active. Now, one of the things I've noticed, and just so you, so we're clear on this, I'm a huge fan of everything you put out on Twitter. I can't get enough of it because, again, it, it makes me seem like I'm an expert all over, all over the world when really I might have just seen something you put out 10 seconds before. Uh, I think what you do that's really important for people, especially if you don't live in a hurricane-prone area, is that you always put a, a ranking or some historical context to what's going on with some of these storms that may be you know, in the central Pacific Basin or far away. So can you just remind remind people the importance of paying attention to some of these storms that are just so far away and how it actually does end up affecting people at home. Yeah, I mean, these storms, so obviously, you know, we're all based in the United States, so we focus on the Atlantic hurricanes in general, but these storms in other basins like the Eastern Pacific, um, those storms sometimes go into the Central Pacific where they can cause significant impacts uh, to Hawaii. Obviously, Hurricane Douglas gave Hawaii a really, really close call last year. Obviously, also when you get into the Western Pacific, you have uh, the most active basin in the world. You have a tremendous number of typhoons on an average basis, and those typhoons can cause significant impacts in China, Japan, Korea, um, and other Asian countries. So these storms, other than in the Atlantic, these storms can cause very significant impacts um, around the world. And I think it's important to kind of see when you see these storms, you know, how do they rank? Is this the strongest storm in the last 10 years, the strongest storm in the last 50 years? Just to kind of put these storms in perspective. You know, uh, your presentation today was absolutely great. And I thought one of the things that was really interesting was that you pointed out, you know, except for the last couple of years, we may not be talking about hurricanes because there's not a lot of interest because it was so quiet for so long, but only in the Atlantic. Uh, when you look at other parts of the world, they were having record years and breaking records, you know, all, uh, historical records. Um, can you just call out the importance of looking at the world as a whole? Because if one area is quiet, you know, things may be happening something somewhere else. Yeah, that's correct. So basically, while when the Atlantic is quiet, the rest of the globe tends to kind of pick up the slack, so to speak, and vice versa. And so, for example, when you have an active Atlantic hurricane season, you typically have La Nina conditions in the tropical Pacific, which is colder water in the tropical Pacific. That makes your Atlantic season more active, but it tends to really knock down your storm activity in the Pacific Ocean. And we saw very quiet Eastern North Pacific and Western North Pacific typhoon season last year. Alternatively, when you have a year like 2015, it was a very, very quiet Atlantic season. The Pacific was extremely active and the Eastern North Pacific set all sorts of records uh, for activity. So when it's quiet in one place, it's probably active someplace else. Um, the average number of storms that occur around the globe is on average between about 60 to 80 every year. There's some fluctuation around that level, but it tends to be fairly constant. Um, so basically when one basin's active, the other basins tend to pick up the, or other basins tend to be quieter. Um, I, I want to uh, round things out here with a focus back to California. Um, you know, I do dozens of school talks every year, and probably about the third question after how much do you make <laughs> and does it ever snow in my hometown is, do we ever get hurricanes in California? So I want to throw that to you with your historical knowledge. Have we had one? Has it been close? And also with the warming water off Southern California and with changes, could we get one in the future or a bigger one? Yeah, so there actually was a hurricane in California in 1858. There was one that went up into San Diego, and there's actually a paper published on that 
uh, probably about 10 years ago now, talking about that hurricane that went up into San Diego. They estimate it was maybe a Category 1 hurricane. Um, typically, as you mentioned, the waters are generally just too cold. The water in the atmosphere is fairly stable, so that tends to knock these storms down um, prior to uh, when they would come up the California coast. Um, however, you know, as the water's warm, you know, potential is still there, but obviously we had one in 1858, and that was long before we had climate change uh, warming. So, you know, you, we, th there is precedent for it, although it, it's a very unusual event. So to say that it can happen, it, obviously it has happened in the historical record, but obviously California has some other natural disasters, I think, that are um, probably a little higher, uh, of, of more significant concern than, say, um, you know, a rogue hurricane every 200 years or so. So you know what little kids are going to hear? They're going to they're going to hear. Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> Cause exactly, there is a chance. It's happened before, so there's nothing to say it won't happen again. You know, kids love severe weather. They love at least learning about it, but not necessarily going through it. So, Dr. Klosbach, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And while we don't get hurricanes here in California per se, I think we'll be looking at some of those gusts, really testing some of these pine trees at the top of the ridge in the next uh, couple days.